Hi folks, so I'm sure many of you know that Stadia is closing down. It will close down on January 18th, 2023. And I know this channel mainly focuses on uh, open source games more over anything else. But um, as I have spent more than a few hours playing Google Stadia games during the time that it's been here, uh, I would like to just to do give it a little send off, a little bit of a reflection video and share some thoughts uh, what I had about the platform uh, with you folks. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll do that over again, I think, because, you know, why not? And this is the game that I've probably played the most on Stadia at all. Uh, it's Grid. It's a pretty standard uh, type of racing game, really. Uh, there was nothing really that stood out other than it was just looked like a fun racing game to, to play on Stadia. I bought it. And, um, yeah, like I had a really, really good time with it. It is available on other platforms, but not to stream through. Uh, like GeForce uh, now, as of time of recording. I don't know if that had any kind of like exclusivity regarding Stadia or whether or not it was just like how it just happened to pan out, but it would be nice if we could see Grid make its way over to NVIDIA GeForce now. One of the reasons that I bought this on Stadia and not necessarily Steam is because this is actually a relatively high fidelity game. And when I play driving games, I quite like the high fidelity ones. I'm generally a fan of low fidelity stuff in general, but when it came, comes to racing games, I like the a lot of the ambience around the game. Uh, I don't play them to be competitive. I don't play them to be good. I play them because I like the I like the experience of it, and I like what the individual games have to offer, uh, and and how they sort of put their own spin on various different motorsports and and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think this did it particularly well. It had a nice balance between arcade and like a pseudo realism, like something that you, you could almost, you know, imagine being on, on Saturday afternoon television. And, um, and it was just fun to play. It was simple. It didn't have too much in the way of the extra stuff, like, you know, pit crew management segments and, and other stuff like that. Uh, you just had, um, you know, you had a career mode, you had multiplayer mode. So in the career mode, look at all those unlocks I got and the gold unlocks as well. I did pretty well. I put a lot of, a few hours into this. Um, uh, did I ever make it? Oh, I got a lot. I got season one done. I uh, got lost season two. Yeah, I did season three. Wow. So I basically did every combination of cars and track that you could imagine on this particular game. I've, I've played it. I've finished it. But um, so I'm going to play. Let's do all talk. Classic mini. Um, yeah. Arc de Triomphe. Why not? Okay, cool. Now, I always quite like Stadia, uh, Stadia, and the reason I quite like Stadia is because it did allow you to play, like, a lot of people don't play that many games. So if you had one or two two games that you felt were were particularly, uh, you know, fun to play, but you, you didn't think they were worth spending a £500, uh, you know, console on, then, um, or it, you didn't think they were worth going out and spending... 500 pounds on a console just to play one or two of your, your favorite AAA games. Stadia was great for that. You'd buy the games and stream it. You might not necessarily get the, the graphic quite as crisp, but you'd get it good enough, especially for someone that isn't a hardcore gamer. And, um, and, and, and you'd be fine. Uh, also, of course, this platform did allow, um, uh, Mac users to be a, like a first class citizen on, on the Stadia. That was, you know, something i know a lot of people who are on on max wouldn't necessarily game that much in their free time but quite enjoy uh you know cooperative games and, and things like that and it'd be great to have seen some cooperative games come along to the stadia particularly if you know other people playing them like player two three and four for example wouldn't wouldn't necessarily have to have a stadia they could play it on the sort of the gaming license of, of player one just a thought like for example something like geoguessr for those of you that are familiar with geoguessr which again is quite a fun game um but yeah, so for casual gamers or for gamers or, or for, for, you know, people who might have a Mac or not particularly good hardware who would like to play just a couple of AAA games could then just put the money down and, and, and pay for it. They don't necessarily have to pay the subscription fee. They just buy the game and play it as and when they want. It's really as simple as that. And then could you like imagine, of course, how cool it would be if the Stadia app started getting installed on... Uh, you know, smart TV is a standard. So you could go to like a, an, you know, if you were just on holiday, uh, an Airbnb or a hotel or something with a smart TV, you could just select the Stadia app, log in and have your full game library, save games and all just there. You know, literally all you'd need is your password. 
maybe you might want to bring a, a custom controller for you know enjoyment but you know you, you you it had the potential to make gaming as accessible as as standard television and i think they really missed out on an opportunity on that and i think a lot of it was that google didn't there were forces inside google that didn't really want it to succeed that felt that gaming like it is a it is a like like an it is conventional wisdom is generally broadly accepted that gaming harms a brand that isn't gaming associated with. Uh, so uh, you see this in, in lots of different ways and uh, expressed in different ways. So for example, the YouTube gaming section of YouTube, even though YouTube gaming is like no longer a thing, YouTube gaming is considered uh, a whole different sort of wing of YouTube than the rest of YouTube. Um, there's, you know, a reason why Twitch is, is branding-wise, is distinct from Amazon when the, you know that they kept it that way when they brought it over. They didn't have to, but uh, you know, people tend to like their their, their gaming brand separate. Um, and you know, you look at like the Microsoft Xbox. Xbox itself is a brand that is is generally distinct from Microsoft. It's seen as being distinct from Microsoft. When people think of Microsoft, they think of Microsoft Office and Windows and stuff like that, the corporate stuff. Um, Xbox is a brand in and of itself, and so Stadia, uh, so Google Stadia sort of, in many ways, kind of failed to, to manage the branding. They failed to manage the promotion, despite being one of the biggest advertising companies in the world. So Stadia was definitely a monumental failure that could have been so much more than it was, and um, and just and, and just failed. It failed because of very basic, bad, poor, basic dis decision making that most people would have been able to work out if they genuinely wanted to make it work and and I think it's something it's, I think part of it is something to do with how they allocate staff on projects on at Google right it's like Google Plus all over again the person that developed the lead developer of Google Plus wasn't a particularly like active person on social media like he didn't know what the ins and outs of of Google Plus the needs of a social network like Google Plus were um I can't say I was never a big user of Google Plus, so I could never say whether or not uh, that sort of reflected. But it might might quite well have been. You know, you hear a lot of people speak fondly of Google Plus uh, in terms of its its UI and its interface. Um, but yeah, there could have been like corporate uh, decisions that made that completely tanked both of those projects, and that's why I certainly think is the case with uh, with Stadia. I'm doing pretty well in this race, but I think this is easy settings. So, yeah, you know, there was a game uh, brought out on Stadia, or is a game brought out on Stadia, depending on when you're watching this video, called Golf With Your Friends. Wonderful golf game, uh, generally playable on, on most machines, truth be told. But uh, on Stadia, um, you, you know, you, you could really have had uh, something that's a little bit more accessible than, you know, and, and getting people that don't play video games, you know, at least joining in uh, on the social experiences that they have to offer. I think that's something they could have done. I think they had a real missed opportunity there. I think gaming is at its best when when you're playing it with friends. You know, uh, you're you're sharing an adventure, you're sharing a story, you're sharing. You know, to me, I think video games is a, is a very profound storytelling tool or or concept expressing tool, and and I think that it, it you know it, it's yet to see it, its full day, um, which is fine. It's a very new media. But, um, yeah, like, I, I think that you can do so much with video games that you can't do on any other media because it is so interactive like, like that. Um, right, let's, let's, let's do a randomized race. Okay, Boost Legends. The Dash. Grand Series. Time Attack. I don't know about Time Attack. Shock and Raw. Nah. Apex Point. Okay. Oh. What have we got here? Mm -hmm. The Ferrari. All right, let's buy a Ferrari. Go on. Last day on, on Stadia, we'll buy, st buy a Ferrari. Okay. But yeah, I really like the platform. I like the Hitman came to it. Uh, my computer does not necessarily run Hitman particularly well. Just adjusting my chair there. Um, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Okay, this is gonna this is gonna be a lot faster than the mini. 
Wow. Um, yeah, and even though there's like mild artifacting, artifacting on this, which I don't know if you'd be able to distinguish it from the video, uh, it's 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 nice. It's it's a, it's a fun um, it's a fun way to play games, and you know, unless you're particularly serious at gaming, uh, you, you you know you wouldn't experience a reduced level of, of enjoyment uh, based on the limitations of Stadia. It's fine. It's great. Um, I think that it, it, it was always or always should have been the case that you were looking at these, uh, playing these games as rentals rather than purchases. But um, I, I think people underneath, uh, understood the score. Uh, I, it was very good at Google to uh, to give people the uh, full refunds for all of that. Uh, people do talk about well, they, they could have they could have done less and and gotten away with it. I don't know. Like I think I think the them like going out and giving full full refunds definitely sort of prevented this from being the PR da disaster it could have been um, you know like everyone goes oh Google Stadia went under no one's really surprised everyone predicted it uh, but the second question that immediately followed is what's going to happen to people that put money into the platform they get all the um, you know it did it, it, it gets refunded which I think was that was that was like the first smart move Stadia ever did um, they 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 failed gracefully, um, and yeah. In reality, when I uh, oh, that was not so good. Um, yeah, but it is sad because Stadia could have been so much more than it than it was. So there we go. Um, GeForce now, you know, you're paying a subscription and you're paying for the price of games, despite the fact that you kind of own them through Steam. But whatever. Um, and and yeah, we could we could talk about whether or not you own a game if you buy it on Steam as well. Um, but to be honest, when it comes to that kind of uh, seriousness to gaming, um, I think that you know open source gaming is the way to go. You want ownership over a game, uh, you know the best way to do it is is to have it as an, an open source game, where the source code is available. It can be ported. It can be picked up. It can be forked. It can be, you know, carried on by different developers after it's been abandoned. All that kind of stuff. Like like. Open source gaming is is a lot of the heart of gaming there, uh, and I think that's really great. Like it's it's the ultimate mod, really, isn't it? Is, is open source games, and I'm glad to see it's it's in such a healthy place, particularly with the, with things like the Go Dot Engine. And I'm going to be doing a lot more um, open source gaming in the in the new year as well. Uh, and I think it has a lot to offer people. It has a lot to offer people um, that you know, like like open source games. They're, they're often uh, quite accessible, you know, them being free and, um, and, and and available on, you know, lots of different platforms and, and moddable. Um, yeah, and, and also, like, uh, most of your open source games, they're not making the full use of of a desktop computer's graphical abilities. They're, they're generally quite graphically modest and um, don't require that much hardware to, to run. Again, making them even more... Um, easy to distribute and, and, and playable on more computers. Oops, ouch. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, and I've been ch checking in with my, my uh, itch.io client quite a lot, and that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be a, a... Oh, no. Uh, a place where I, I spend... Try and look for uh, for quite a few games. Uh, I've got a lot of... I've bought a lot of games on itch that, that I haven't really played as well, so I've got to, got to get around to them uh, at some point. Maybe... Um, but yeah, I, I, there's a lot of open source games that port, uh, that are um, ported out to uh, to, to itch, uh, which is quite good as well. Uh, makes it easy to download and play on you know just about any distribution, which is kind of cool. So yeah, um, Stadia always performed relatively well for me. It didn't necessarily like, and my internet connection is I would say reasonably average for the UK. Um, Obviously, whether or not Stadia is useful to you is going to depend largely on probably where you live more over anything else, how reliable the internet connection is, because it wasn't just bandwidth alone uh, that um, and speed alone that, that, that Stadia wanted, but also latency, and latency came a lot into it. So uh, I always ended up playing with a wired connection, uh, whether or not that was as necessary. I never really tested that. I could have played some on a laptop, but... Uh, um, in reality, I, I had a nice gaming setup from which to play Stadia. Um, 
I uh, I have a uh, GeForce Now subscription at the moment, but I don't know if I'm going to be carrying that on because that is what's that like sixty quid every? Uh, what I don't know. It's like it's, it's about seven pound fifty a month if you get the you know get it in like six monthly installments or whatever. So mm, I don't know. I've got a few games that I quite like playing that are quite high fidelity and a bit fast for this computer, but you know paying a full GeForce Now is arguably maybe not worth it i don't know so anyway that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching um yeah this is stadia i thought it was really good and it would be nice if it was done by a different company but you know google have the the money and the technology behind them to to have made it work and they made it work on a technical level and f and and made incredibly dumb business decisions which is sad um but there we go um steam is a company that has always been good to linux and I don't have too much of a problem spending my money there and um, there's plenty of good open source projects so I don't necessarily feel that you know and I don't think there are any games on Stadia that you can really you know that are literally going to um, be unplayable I think there might have been one or two exclusives but um, I think on the whole most games um, you know, if you were that desperate to play them, if I wanted to play Grid, I think I could probably play Grid. I don't know if it would work on Wine, whether or not I need a faster computer or whatever. Uh, but if not, I could, I could play a game like it. Like, it's not a particularly unique game. Uh, I could find a game that, that sort of scratches that same itch. And in fact, uh, I have played, I think it's Dirt Rally. I think that's quite good. I played that on uh, through GeForce Now. So it's not like we're without streaming and it's not like we're without the games on the platform. It's just like the the way that it made it as seamless as it did, I think brought value. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm going to be a little bit sad to see it go. But also every time Google fails at something, it just reminds me that, you know, giants can still be toppled. So even just like a little bit. So anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I think that... Um, I think that that, that uh, that's been said, yeah. And I think that that yeah, it could have been so much more than it was, um, but uh, it was fun while it lasted, and I'm glad that I got to enjoy it and basically have all my money back refunded back to me. So, you know, like I say, good while it was lasted. So uh, yeah, until next time, folks. And also, please feel free to leave uh, your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you have any ideas on what videos you would like to see me make in the future, please also. Uh, include them in the uh, in the comment section below because you know always on the lookout for a good idea so thank you very much for watching that's about it for me today until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome toodaloo